our journey today in God's word. My message for those that may be taking notes is in the field of faith. You see, we are, this is the last midweek service of 2018. Wow. Can we just praise God for bringing us this far? Amen. You see, I love that we, the, the song that we worshiped into, that Lord, you are faithful. All your promises are yes and amen. You see, around this time when the year is ending, we literally have days away from 2019, we begin to examine our lives, we begin to examine the things, and we begin to almost question even the areas and the words that God has spoken to us that we are yet to see the manifestation. We almost come into this place where we are arguing, our, using our intellect to argue with our peace. To say, God, I, I know I'm peaceful in this place, but we start using our intellect to, to question, but this has not happened, that has not happened. But all the promises of God are yes and amen. And so as I was preparing for what the Lord, you know, really had for us today, this evening, it's a simple message, but we're going to also look at it through the life of a man named David. And that word is to tell us that in the place of your faithfulness, everything assigned to you would meet you there. That sometimes we may, the very place that the word of God may lead us into may look obscure, it may look insignificant, it may, it may seem questionable, it may seem below what we know we are, we are capable of doing. But the fact of the matter is that God knows what to use to bring out the best in us. He knows the places to position us in to bring out the best in us. He knows the tools, the equipment, the people, the, the positions to, to put us in that will pull out our truth. It's interesting. The word of God always tells us that when you are faithful with little, God can trust you over much. And so what that says to me is that when you start the little, the warfare on the little is as though it is much. Because the enemy knows that if you can... Be faithful in that. You will definitely access the more that God has for you. And so the warfare on the small things seems like what it would be when it's huge. And sometimes we, we begin to think that we, we, we question what is little because of the warfare. And we walk out on it because we think our disobedience doesn't have that much consequences. But the very fact of the matter is that that little is what takes you to the more that God has assigned to your life. And so in that place that seems insignificant, that place that seems obscure, is actually in many cases more important than the destination that you're waiting for. Because that is the place that God prepares us. That's the place that God prunes us. That's the place that God sharpens us. And that is the place that the fertility of our hearts are tested. Can I trust you with this word? That no matter the, con the, no matter the, the circumstances that you may be in, would your heart, can you be fertile ground for the word of God? That you will hold on to the word of God no matter what, knowing that the promises of God are yes and amen. So I want us to look at the story. We, this is a story that many of us may be familiar with. It's a story of David, and we're going to look in particular at the time where he was first anointed to be king. And as we look in this story, let's just take, on a, take it on a, on a whole new journey. Because as I study this, the Holy Spirit opened my eyes in, in very unique ways. And that's what I want to take into. Because I believe that what the Lord brought out of this message is really going to speak into our lives and speak into the season of our lives. And so we're going to start in 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 1 to 13. And the scripture begins and it says, The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul, since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided, I have chosen for myself a king amongst his sons. You see, what is taking place here is that the king at the time was a, was a man named King Saul. Before King Saul, there was no king in Israel. Israel was, like every, like, was unlike every other nation. Every other nation had a king, but they did not have a king because the Lord wanted to directly reign over his people. 
But all of a sudden, you know, the people said, we want a king. We want to be like the other nations. God, give us a king. So, in, in, you know, before they didn't have a king, the Lord would speak to the prophets, and the prophets would give the people instructions. So at this time, it would seem as though they were rejecting the prophet. The prophet at this time was a prophet named Samuel. But the Lord tells the prophet Samuel, he says, they have not rejected you. They have rejected me as king. But he tells him basically that he would show him a man that he would, that he would choose as the king over the people of Israel. Now, the whole point of this was that I believe it was the desire of the Lord to pick a king that would show, that would be an example to the people. That would be an example to them to say that you are, you, you are led by the opinions of men. Because the reason they wanted a king is because they're seeing what every other nation is doing. But if the Lord put a king in position, that king was to be an example to the people to show them that even as you have an earthly king, I am still submitted to the voice of God. And so the purpose of King Saul being there, yes, he was, called, he was put as an earthly king, but he was to be an example to the people. That yes, I'm your king, but I am still submitted under the voice of God. So King Saul comes into position. They, you know, the, the, the kings, I mean, the prophet Samuel, the Lord gives him direction and this whole beautiful things happen and he's anointed as king. But all of a sudden he starts to deviate. He starts to compromise. He lost his way when he was, he was more moved by the applause of people. He was more moved by the validation of people. And he began to disobey the voice of God for the people. Now, this was counterproductive because the whole point of him being there, the whole point of God choosing him was that he would be an example of what it means to be submitted. Even though I'm giving you what you think you want, I want this person to represent that you should always lead by the voice that created you. But King Saul is doing what the very thing that the people were doing. All of a sudden, instead of listening to what the Lord is saying, he began to compromise because anytime it seemed like the people were leaving him, he would do the opposite of what the Lord had instructed him to do. And so because of this, the Lord says, you know what? I'm going to choose another king for myself. Now, the crazy thing in this is that we see that the prophet Samuel is mourning. Now, there's a lot of debate. Some, some theologians believe that it was never God's intention for King Saul to reign forever. I personally disagree with this because in the scriptures, the first time that um, King Saul actually disobeyed the Lord in 1 Samuel 13, 13, I believe, for those taking notes, the prophet told him that, what have you done? That you have done a foolish thing because the Lord would have established your kingdom forever. You see, family, God is not petty. God will not put you in a position to watch you fail. That every position, that every place, every position that the Lord puts, puts you on, that he knows that there is something in you that has the potential to be who he says you will be. And that speaks to us that every single human being in life has equal opportunity to walk out the greatness of their life. And so God will give you access to those opportunities at their, up, at their point at time. But it is up to you. It is up to your character. It is up to the things that you should have learned in your process that would keep you there. I don't believe that personally it was the Lord's choice to, put, to, to make Saul king and then reject him as king. For him to reject him as king, um, last Thursday I spoke about rejection. And one thing I have learned about rejection, that rejection is not a negative word. Rejection just reveals a fact. It either speaks that what you're going after, that the person either cannot accept you or receive you or your gift because they don't have capacity for it, or there is something that you are unable to receive because you don't have the capacity for that. So rejection is not this negative word that we have brought it out to be. It just reveals a fact. Because capacity could look like so many things. Capacity could look like knowledge, wisdom, heart posture. It could look like so many things. And if someone does not have the capacity for you or you don't have the capacity for it, it will seem like rejection, but it's just revealing that this cannot flow together. And so when the Lord rejects Saul, he's saying that Saul, the very thing that, that made me choose you into this position, you have moved from that path. You see, family, in the beginning, the king Saul, I believe, was a humble man. Because the scriptures tells us that when the prophet had even spoken to him that he would be the one that would be king over Israel, his, his response to him actually were a bit different. 
He begins to tell him that, don't you know that I am from the tribe of Benjamin, that my tribe, we are the least. And in my tribe, my clan is the least. And so there was an awareness in that scripture that Saul, you're not, being, you're not gonna be king because of your influence. You're not king, actually, you, your tribe is very insignificant. Where you come from would not give you this position. There was an awareness that this is literally only done by the hand of God and the favor of God upon your life. You see, if Saul had remembered that it was not the people that put him in position, because nothing about him was actually significant enough for the people to say, this is the one we want to choose. If he had remembered that, God, you are the one, it was your hand that brought me into this position. Then when he actually became king, you see, God would always equip you. God would always give you the experiences and the memories and, 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 and the, the, just the tools for you for, that you need in order to fulfill your destiny. The one thing that Saul needed in his life was the awareness that God, even in a small place, you would be with me. Even if I am the least, you would be with me. That was the thing that was going to shape his destiny, but he deviated from it. And all of a sudden, when you read about Saul, every time that it seemed like the people were leaving him, then he would compromise. But if Saul remembered that I came from the smallest tribe, I came from the smallest clan. And so even if only two people stood with me, the power of God will show up with those two people. But all of a sudden, Saul lost focus, and he began to compromise. You see, God, every opportunity that God gives you, God gives you a fair shot at being the best. But in this case, Saul was moving away from the very will and purpose of God, and the Lord says, you know what? I have chosen a man that will be after my heart. I have chosen someone that will carry out my will. And so he tells, the, he tells the prophet, he says, stop grieving over Saul. You see, I just sense that for some of us in this house, we are mourning. I believe that the prophet may have been mourning the potential of Saul. Because as a prophet, there were things that I believe that God had revealed to him about the identity of Saul. And the Lord says, look, you got to stop that because there's something new I'm about to do right now. You see, I believe for some of us, even in this season, we have to learn that we, we, there, there are certain things that God will call us to walk away from, and you cannot argue the potential with the reality. Because sometimes we want to argue with God and tell him the potential of a thing. And the Lord is saying, but they have free will. And they're, what they're choosing with their free will is going to be against your destiny. And so you have to be okay when God begins to tell you to walk away from certain things and you're over there arguing with him because you're talking about potential. And the Lord said, yes, I'm aware of their potential and that's why I even gave it a shot. But I would not go against free will. And free will speaks to the reality of what a thing would do, in, in, it would, the impact a thing would have in your life. Every criminal has the potential to be something much greater. Everyone, someone that, may, that, that could even, a murderer today, someone that even at this very hour has the potential to be president. And we pray for them because we believe that God can turn the hearts of men and women and God can do great things out of people because they're, at the end of the day, I don't believe, every, and someone just wakes up wanting to be evil. But you have to know when to apply wisdom. You have to know when to apply because if God did not call you to be the one who who brings direct change, you have to know when to move out the way. Because while if you're forcing it, you may just get something <laughs> that will hit you that was not intended for you because you are playing a role that God never assigned you to. And so we have to learn because humility, humility does not say, God, I just want to be, you know, Mother Teresa. God, I just want to go out there. I'm just going to put my life on the line and just, you know what, I'm going to be, you know, your person, God. If God did not call you there, then you are walking in pride because it is the grace of God. It is the word of God that would keep you in a place. If God called you there, then by all means, have no fear because God will protect you. But if God did not call you there, and you're focused on the potential of a thing, the reality can destroy you. 
And so we have to learn how to move with the beat of God. We have to learn how to move in alignment with his word because the word of God sometimes will reveal something to you that you are yet to see. But because he sees the end from the beginning, he's saying, yes, I know right now it looks great, but you, if you only see where this thing will lead you to, you will thank me and praise me now that I told you to walk away. And I believe there are some people in this house that there are things that God has told you to walk away from. And you feel as though that maybe you're going to, be, you're, you're going to regret the decisions you have made. And there are some that you have walked away from things and you're in the place of your faithfulness. You're in the place that the word of God has called you. And you're questioning, God, did I make a mistake? No, the faithfulness of God will show up where you stayed. And so it's really about this life. There is no, there, the, one of the interesting things that I've learned with God is that there is no actual formula for your destiny. The only thing is we, really you're being led by the spirit of God. It says that sons of God are those that are led by his spirit. There is no actual, because formula will bring us under law. And say you do this, when you make a right, you take two steps forward, then you take two steps back. That's the spirit of God right there. Wow. <laughs> It's being led by his voice. It's being led by his word. It's being led because what God may say to you may be different from what he says to me. And so we have to be okay with saying that. It's not about saying, God, but you didn't tell this person to do the same thing. We have to be okay with being led because we are all called differently. We're called to different things where our callings are very unique. And so that is why even comparison is without wisdom. Because I cannot compare my call to another when we are called. We're, we're, we're called to touch things differently. And so the passage continues. And it says, and Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you. It's in the Bible, y'all. It's right there. It's <laughs> It's in all versions, King James, New King James, all of them. Take <laughs> This is an animal. So it says, take it. <laughs> it says, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. The Lord has given him strategy. And he was not really telling him to lie because actually he was going to go do a sacrifice. He was just going to disclose important information. And invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me him whom I declare to you. And so the reason he can invite Jesse to the sacrifice is that this, this particular sacrifice that the prophet was going to do was actually going to be like a social feast. And so the prophet could invite anyone he wanted at his choosing without it alarming anyone. And so it continues and says, Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, do you come peaceably? You see, Bethlehem was a place that was not really an important city at the time like that. And it was not really a place that the prophet would normally go to. And so when they see the prophet coming, they're a bit alarmed thinking that something is wrong, but it's actually not the case. And so the scripture continues and says, and he said, peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on the appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. You see, what is fascinating about this is that the very, again, the same word that the Lord uses for Saul, he uses to, in speaking about Samuel's first son. But even in this case, I wondered, I said, Lord, when you're saying that you rejected his son, why would you reject his son? Then it almost, it almost offers this notion that in a way, his son could have been chosen. Because the scripture tells us many are called, but few are chosen. It was almost as if, you see, the interesting thing about what is happening here, Saul had been chosen, I mean, Saul initially was chosen as king. When Saul deviated, he dropped his mantle. When Saul disobeyed the word of the God, he released his mantle in the earth. You see, a mantle represents the anointing of the Holy Spirit to empower you for something. 
It represents when the Holy Spirit appoints you for a kingdom assignment on the earth. And so when Saul, who was given the, the appointment of king over Israel, when he chooses a different route, he drops what God has given him. You see, as I studied this, the Lord was showing me that there are many mantles in the earth that are waiting for one who has a heart surrendered to God. Because a picking up an assignment does not change. It, it is an add-on to what God has already called you to do. And it's actually a blessing, not a burden, because there is an increase of the activity of the Holy Spirit in your life. You are empowered to be more effective in life. You see, why I believe that this was the case, because when we read, and let me even read verse 8 to 11. It says, then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. Because I said, Lord, if, the, if it was just about David, you told the prophet the name of his father. You should have just told him, you know what, I'm calling you to go to the house of Jesse. When you get to Jesse, ask him about his son David and bring him with you to the sacrifice. But instead, the Lord allowed every son to pass by Samuel. Almost as if the Lord is showing us that everyone had an opportunity to grab this mantle. But something about how they responded to process, something about how they responded to life made them not choosable. Because when the Bible says many are called but few are chosen, it me it's not that God is like, wow, I'm just going to call a lot of you so y'all can watch me audition, people. No. <laughs> many are called but few make themselves choosable. Few are willing to surrender their lives before the Lord. Few are willing to lose their lives so they can find it in God. That few, I believe I'm speaking to. Because I believe that I am in a room of people that have made sacrifices. And that people questioned why you were doing what you were doing. But you knew that something about this very thing that the Lord has asked me to do is connected to the very core of who I am. You see, family, have you ever felt that when you began to seek the face of God, all of a sudden it felt like God was stripping you of everything you thought you knew? That when you began to seek his face, that even the desires that you believe that God, you put them in me, all of a sudden it's like he's asking you to walk away from it. And as you walk away from it, people begin to question you. Family begin to question you. What are you doing with your life? You find your places in the very things that you, were never, you, you, you never thought you were called to do. But then the Lord starts positioning you in, in, in strange places. Even though you're like, God, I know there is much more to me than this very thing. But even in that place that seems obscure and insignificant, you have peace. And even when you want to fight against this, the Lord begins to show you what he's working within you. You see, because the sons of Jesse, they looked the part. They, 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 on the outside, everything was great. I mean, they were even, some of them were soldiers. So if God is going to pick another king, I mean, pick a person that is already, he's already, they're already in the army. But David was, was allowing the Lord to work on his heart. While everyone was looking the part, David was being the part. You see, at the top of this year, our pastor said that this is the year of becoming. And becoming is such a process that it sounds amazing. In the, in the beginning of the year, we're like, whoo, Lord Jesus, I'm becoming. Hallelujah. We were dancing. And then becoming... All of a sudden, there are layers being stripped off you, layers that you found comfort in, layers that you placed your identity in. And the Lord is saying, no, these layers were contaminated. Because, yes, it had a piece of the desires that I put in you, but they have been contaminated with what the world wants you to be. And so sometimes I have to strip you down. And that when I begin to build you up, you would know that this is the hand of God. You would see purpose. You would have intentionality. You would have vision. You would have strategy. You're not just doing things randomly or for the glamour of things. Now you're driven by purpose. 
You see, the sons of Jesse, it looked, it, they, the, the fact that they looked the part, it just speaks to how things appear to be, the glamour of life. And the Lord says, I'm not, I'm not into that. I want someone who can be connected to the purpose of this position. This mantle was available for so many people. You see, even in, your, in the different fields that you're in, there are things that, there are mantles that are looking for a home. There are things that the Lord is saying, I want to assign greater to somebody. I want to place you that the very things that you've been wondering, why hasn't anyone done it? The very things that you feel like, oh, God, I don't even know if I'm the one. There's already resources of heaven waiting to back up someone whose heart is surrendered before God. You see, it's interesting because the Bible then tells us, then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then, oh, wait, no. So then the Lord had not chosen these. Let's go to verse 11. Then it says, then Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet <clears throat> the youngest, but behold, he is keeping the sheep. There's another scripture that translates that very verse to that he is in the field watching the sheep. And I love what it says here because it says, And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and get him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. Everyone was in the right place at the, what seemed to be the right time. They abandoned David in the field. But the interesting thing, family, is that that was the field of his faith. That he was keeping the sheep. He was in the field watching over the sheep. And I believe that this was even intentional. That what they thought, the decision that they made in seeing him as insignificant. The decision that they made in, in overlooking him. That I believe it was actually the purpose of God for, for David to be sought out. You see, on Sunday, our pastors, they spoke about faith, favor, and family. And there was something unique that they said in regards to favor, that, it re that faith is required for the manifestation of favor. You see, I, think, I, I find it very symbolic that the favor assigned to David found him in the place of his faith. You see, David was a shepherd boy, but he was not just any ordinary shepherd boy. Because David would put his life on the line for sheep. That's told me that there is something unique about David because if you have the ability to fight a lion and a bear for a sheep, then I'm sure you saw yourself as a warrior. That David, it would have even made more sense for him to say, you know what, let me go try out for the, for the king's army. But he stayed faithful as a shepherd. You see, when you study about David, you would recognize that David had, had a familiarity with the voice of God. That, there, that he, was not, he was not unfamiliar with the voice of God in his life. It almost suggests that it would appear that God was the one keeping him as a shepherd. That his position as a shepherd in the midst of being overlooked by his family. The scripture also suggests that Jesse, his father, may have questioned his identity because there was a, there's a Psalms where David says, in sin did my mother conceive me. It was almost as though he also questioned that could this really be my father with the way they're treating me. But yet David stayed faithful. And it was in the field of his faith that he was sought out. He didn't have to go to them. They came to him. You see, family, there are places that God has positioned you in. There are things that God has called you to. And even though many may not understand it, in that very place, favor will find you. You may question and you may wonder, God, it seems like nothing is working out for me. I came here to be an actor and I'm a salesperson. <laughs> but in that very place, there's something that God is actually using to prune you. Maybe the Lord is saying, I need to help, I need to, to make you a people person. You're a little stiff. And I don't want people to dislike you when you go into the room. <laughs> You, the, the ways of God, it blows our minds, family. But God knows how to sharpen, how to get the best out of us. And so while David was a shepherd, he was actually learning how to be king. He was learning how to put his life on the line for the people that he's assigned to lead. He stayed in the place that actually was even that would seem like it was beneath him. 
But his ability to handle warfare on that level is what made the story that we know of when he, he fought against Goliath made it a breeze. He, didn't, he never even flinched once when he's fighting a giant because he had experienced warfare in the small thing and he overcame it. And so he knew that God, the big thing, would not be my problem. The place that you have been faithful, family, that you may want to question in this season and wonder and ask God, God, I don't know if this thing is fruitful. I don't know if I see fruit in it yet. But the Lord is showing you, be patient, be still. Because that very place is where the favor of God is going to come after you. You see, favor makes you sought out. You may think that, God, I need to, you, you, may, you may try to compromise and say, you know what, I need to be here, I need to be there. And the Lord says, just be still. Because you're forgetting that I opened the door when you did not even have the ability to get in. And if I did that, why do you think that you have to compromise to stay in the room? When the very person that opened the door for you was not the people that is telling you to change. I did that. And so why is it that when you get in the room, you think that you have to compromise to stay there? Some things are going to seem hard and some things that will make you feel as though you're alone or they make you feel lonely. But the Lord is saying, just be patient. Stay faithful in the place I have called you. Because the field of your faith is where favor will find you. You see, it's interesting. In this passage, it then says that, and he went and brought him in. And he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and handsome. And the Lord said, arise. Now, I found this fascinating because we just read where the prophet said, we will not sit down till he comes. But then the Lord says, arise and anoint him. And I'm like, Lord, what are they doing? Is there a different way to stand up or weren't they already standing? And so I researched this word and I said, what does that word actually mean? Because it's, it's, it, it, it definitely tells us that they were standing if they said that we will not sit down till he comes here. And so when I studied that word, arise actually has the, ha, deals with the meaning of establish or confirm. You see, as I studied this and as I was in prayer, the Lord said two things to me that is about to happen in the lives of, in the lives of many. And I believe by faith in everyone's life. He said that your miracle <clears throat> and the answer, <clears throat> hallelujah. <laughs> he said your miracle and the answer to your prayer is going to come in, there, there are three folds. And that the first part of it is that the Lord would confirm what he said to you in the dark first amongst those in your inner circle that questioned you. You see, when the Lord tells him, arise. He's telling the, the, the prophet, confirm my word, establish this man. It's almost as though confirming not just to the prophet, because to confirm something means that there was something David also knew about himself. And now he's going to confirm the word of God in the presence of his brothers. In the presence of the people that have looked down on him. In the presence of his inner circle, that question that David, you know what, you're just a, 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 you know, on a wild goose chase or something. And the Lord said that the first thing that he's going to do is that he will begin to confirm who you are to those in your inner circle that had questioned you. You see, many of you, people are going to talk about you in meetings that you're not even in. But the people that spoke against you will be in that meeting. And somebody will begin to talk about your work ethic. They will begin to talk about your, 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 your character. They will begin to talk about your heart posture. They will begin to talk so highly of you that all of a sudden, and this is already happening to many of you, that you're receiving calls from people that you know were once not really for you, even though you guys were once close. Because all of a sudden, the Lord says, I'm going to begin to confirm. I'm going, I, I'm going to create an audience to see who I've called you to be. And so everything that you feel like you have been in a hidden place, you feel like, God, this word that you have given me is just between you and I. That this word has lived in a secret place for so long that I'm coming to, you know, give it a, a, a secret, like a name or something. Like, it's not my secret best friend, you know, my... <laughs> But the Lord is saying, <laughs> it's funnier in my head. But, <laughs> but as I prayed, family, <laughs> I, 
I saw this so clearly. That there are things, there are people, even family members, that have questioned and did not understand the decisions that you made. Because the truth of the matter is that while you were making those decisions, there were other offers that came that looked better. And because you knew what the Lord was saying, because your hearts could not even allow you to make that decision, you stayed right where God called you, and people laughed at you. People made a mockery of you. People said you were foolish. People said you did not know what you were doing. But deep down, you knew that you're, you had that there was such an, uh, an unshakable peace that you had concerning the matter. You knew that you were not even doing this because you desired it. But there was something greater than you that was leading you into those decisions. The Lord said, I will start with the people that surrounded you. And made and questioned your, your ability. You see, the Lord did not need this, all the sons of Jesse to be present. He could have given the prophet specific instructions and that would be it. But the Lord created an audience for what he was about to do. And then the second thing he did, he says, arise, anoint him for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. You see, when it says that the spirit of the Lord rushed upon him, this was the anointing of the Lord that empowered David to do greater than he has ever done before. You see, many of you are going to walk into rooms and God is going to put you on platforms that really, you, even though you have been groomed, it seems like God has groomed you in the secret place for it. There are things that you're going to need for those platforms that you've never practiced before. David had never practiced how to talk like a king. David had never practiced how to lead actual people. He was leading sheep. But you see, when the spirit of the Lord begins to rush upon you, then there is a wisdom that God puts within you. And so for some of you, it's not about questioning, God, you know what, you've prepared my heart, but you've not really um, given me the wisdom or the strategy. I've never really seen something like this before. And God says, really, all I need is your heart. Because when you picked up that mantle, there was an anointing that will come upon you. And all of a sudden, you will know things that you had no idea how you knew it. That you would have strategy, that you would speak. Even if you're speaking in Ebonics, people will be like, wow. That is some wisdom. <laughs> the spirit of Lord would rush upon you. The anointing of God will come upon you. You see, the Bible says it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. It is the anointing that brings change. It is the anointing that causes deliverance. So when the anointing of the Lord comes upon you, it's not even about whether you knew how to lead people or sheep, God will just turn, will, will give you the wisdom for the people. God will give you the wisdom for the positions. God will give you the wisdom for the roles. And so, yes, you may feel so far away from the things that God called you to, but family, the moment that God begins to prepare the way, he says, you don't need what you think you need. All you really need is my anointing. Because you see, the Holy Spirit is knowledge. The Holy Spirit is wisdom. He is understanding. He is might. He is courage. You may have been in a place where you were all by yourself and you're like, God, I don't know how I'm going to function around people or in front of people. And God is like, don't worry about that. My anointing is there for that. Because in my anointing, there is boldness. Do you know that there was a time where the disciples prayed for boldness? And they actually, and then the scripture tells us, and they prayed in boldness. Because the Holy Spirit is all these things. And so when the Lord, when the anointing of God rushes upon you, do not question. Why I'm saying this, family, is that never question where God is calling you based on where you are. Do not think because the enemy would want to deceive you that you're so far away from the promise of God because there are certain things that other people have gone through to get to where it looks like God is calling you. But the truth of the matter is that where God is calling you, you don't even have a clue. You see, you have to understand that even though David knew that there was something great about his life, there was a king at the time. So it, was, it, would be, it, would be, it, it wouldn't even make sense for David to imagine himself as king because there was already a king. Only, it was only between the Lord, um, um, the prophet Samuel, and Saul that knew that the Lord has rejected Saul. Nobody else knew that. 
David could not even think that, wow, God, I just can't wait to be king. <laughs> you know, he was not Simba. He was not even connected to the bloodline of Saul. And so when God is calling you, you may not even have a clue. Because the place he's calling you may even look like a place that is occupied. And the Lord said, let me just work on you. Because you don't even know. You think you, you, I wondered. I really took my time. I said, I wonder if David was just hoping for the day he would be a soldier. Not knowing he would be the one to lead the people. He would even lead <clears throat> the soldiers. And this is why we have to be patient. The Lord will do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all that we can think or imagine according to the power that works within us, according to the power of his spirit. There are things that the Lord will lead you into that is far beyond your belief, and all the Lord requires is a heart that is surrendered to him. That yes, where you may be, and, and even as we're ending the year, there are things that you celebrate about your life and you're celebrating that God is doing for you. And there are also things that you may question, God, I'm just waiting to see the fruit. The fruit is going to blow your mind because the Lord is with you. You see, the third thing, because when they anointed David, later on in the scriptures, we would read that this was almost what prepared him to take on Goliath. There was a boldness David had. There was a knowing David had that I will kill this man. There, there, it was such a relentless spirit about David. And it was the anointing of the Lord upon him that empowered him and equipped him right before the battle that would put him on the platform of nations. You see, family, things are going to look so different for your life. And I know we always like to say this, you know, a year from now, wow, I'm just going to have my Lamborghini, my gosh. And then a year from now, you upgrade it to a bicycle. That's it. That's what's up. <laughs> but no, I'm serious, family. Things are going to look so different for your lives. Because there is something, you see, one, one of the things that I love, our pastor always says, is that if you're called to this church, if you're drawn to this church, there is so much greatness in your life that is about to just be untapped. You see, there are voices. The reason why it's not like we have just, there's just this one, you know, God calls one pastor at a time in the world. Because if it's about, it's not just, we, we come together to study the word, we learn the word, but there are certain prophetic messages that are for those that are drawn to the voices that God has put in the house. And so sometimes we may question, you know, when, when you hear a prophetic word, you may question it and say, well, is that for everybody? Because we're all so different. But there are some prophetic words that are general because the Lord knows who is drawn to the voices in the house. And so when the Lord begins to release certain words, we just have to be, have fertile, our hearts need to be fertile enough to catch it. Because you see, the interesting thing about Jesus was that Jesus, anyone who came to Jesus as he walked the earth, they received their healing. But the truth is that Jesus did not go to everywhere. Jesus went every place he went to, he, he was very aware and intentional about the places that he was going to. And so when he was going to a place, he was already prepared that everyone that would be drawn to him would receive exactly what they, what they, they believe by faith for. And so there are places that you would be drawn to and there are places that God will send a person to with a word that can be general if you have the faith to catch it. And so if you can begin to look at your situation differently, if you can begin to look at it with joy, because joy is the evidence of faith. When you can say that, you know what, Lord, I'm, I may not understand where this is going, but I believe that you're making all things work together for my good. I believe that your promises in my life will be fulfilled. I believe they are a yes and amen. When I begin to do what seems insignificant with joy, I have tapped into the field of my faith. And in that place, favor would rush upon you. You would be sought out by the things you were looking for. When God revealed to me the timing that he said, I'm going to raise you as a minister, he had me walk away from everything that I thought, uh, well, mo almost everything, that I believed that was part of what God was calling me into. And it was so confusing. My family was just like, what, what are you doing with your life? 
And it was one of the most difficult times and one of the most beautiful times. It was beautiful because there was, there was a joy in me that could not be shaken. And it was very difficult because no one could understand. The people that, the, the people in, that were close to me in my circle could not understand what I was doing. And it was crazy because I'm, I'm in a place where I'm seeing God bring those very things back. But he's bringing it with his hand on it. He's not, it, it, I, I'm not being led aimlessly anymore. I'm not being led. It's not about the glam but now I'm walking into things and it's because of the purpose and the beautiful thing family is that the things that I thought that God stripped away from me it found me in the place of my faith and so this is what I want to share with you as we're getting ready to go into 2019 the field of your faith that is a play it, it would attract everything assigned to your life and more because all this happens in stages, in stages. There, there, there are things that will test the fertility of your heart in stages. God wants to know, can I trust you for the next thing? Can I trust you for the next thing? There are processes, there are words, there are places that he will put you through. Because not only is he pruning you, but he's testing to know, can, the, can my word survive in you? Despite your circumstances around you, can my word live in you? Would that be the thing that guards and guides your life, even when everything looks... Everything Thing just looks like it's not speaking to what I said. Can you live by my word even when you don't see how it's going to come together? Can your heart be fertile ground for me? And if that is the case, I will plant so much in you that would it, it would overflow. It, would, it, it wouldn't even make sense how you can contain it, but the Lord will make room because he would enlarge your territory. And so let us be faithful. Let us be faithful. You have to treat where you are like where you're going. You cannot wait for where you're going to be more disciplined. You cannot wait for where you're going to be, to be more effective. You have to treat where you are like where you're going. And I believe that's what David did. He treated the place, the field of his faith, the field that he was a shepherd, he treated it like where he was going. Even though he may not have known the magnitude of where he was going, he was faithful in that place. He was effective in that place. Despite the challenges around him, David stayed true to the word of God in his life. And that is a question I have for us all. Is your heart fertile ground for the word of God? Is your heart fertile ground for the things that the promises and the plans of God? Is it fertile ground for it? Do you have the capacity to receive what God wants to give you? And so as we take time to... To, 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 you know, uh, to look back and observe and, and look into the, the year and what we're, our goals ahead. Let us have the goal to be surrendered. Let us have goals to be more surrendered before the Lord. Let us examine the areas in our lives that we were hesitant when the Lord is saying move and we didn't want to move. Let us examine those areas and say, Lord, I want my heart to be fertile ground for your word. Because if your word can live in me, then you can position me naturally in the places that that word has been called to be produced. Family, stand with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God has some great plans for you in his house. Some great plans. And as a lady, I just want to use, I want to speak into your life, but I want to use you as a sign for what God is doing. And it's a lady in the back. You have a beanie on your head. <laughs> Can you come forward? I want to pray with you as, and just connect my prayer with you to everyone in this house. Hi, how are you? 
I just want to use this, I just want to, uh, as, a, as a point of contact. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> I know. But the Lord, you, the Lord really highlighted you to me. You have been faithful. You have cried many times to sleep, asking God when. And in many times you've asked him why. There were a lot of questions. You would say, why, God, why is this happening? And God, when, those were the two major questions of your life, why and when. And I believe that that speaks to many of us in this house. God, why is this happening? And when will this happen? And the Lord is going to use you as such a powerful example on the earth. Because as I saw you, it may look like you may be in a position where it seems like you're by yourself and you're alone. But you are not alone. Because there is such a, there, there is a, there is a light on you that is beautiful. <laughs> and, and, and I want, and I'm saying this because I want you to know that God is, is very, is, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the word? You know that song, Reckless Love? There is a reckless love that God has for you. Because there are things that he has put you through, he has allowed you to go through. That to someone else, I don't want to really go into the details, but I'd like to talk to you after. But there are things that he allowed you to go through that for someone else, I would actually make them walk away from their faith. But the Lord said, I could trust you with that experience. I could trust you with it. Because rather than you, rather than it working against you, because you see, family, everything that God does in your life, there is a way for you to see how it's going to work for you. And that's why not everything happens to the same person. And so in a way, you're asking God, why did this happen? But you actually had the capacity for it. And so despite you asking why, you still come faithful in the house of the Lord. And the Lord said, I'm about to do something in your life that goes way beyond what you could have ever asked me for. And I want you guys to remember her face. Because God is going to move greatly in her life. <laughs> Take a smile. <laughs> but I want to use you as a point of contact. Because what the Lord is speaking to me about you, he's going to do in this house for us. That God, that the, that the questions that you've had, God why and God when, that he is answering it in the place of your faith. In the place of your faith. You have been faithful. You have been faithful, and God sees it, he knows it, and he's about to do some mighty works in your life. <laughs> oh, God, we love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Family, let us pray. Lord, I thank you for your daughter, and I thank you for all those in this house. I even use her as a point of contact to your people. Because, love, Lord, oh, Lord Jesus, wow. Lord, you're about to open some mighty doors in her life. I see where you would even begin to, you, you, you have such a big heart to give. And almost to the point that, not everybody, you know, we all say when we're rich, oh, I'm just going to buy all my family members a house. <laughs> but think again when the money comes. But, <laughs> but actually see you buying homes for people. And it's actually a desire you have. But the Lord said that the desire is actually, it, 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 it's, not, it's not vague. It's actually real. And I see that the Lord will empower you to do that. Oh, God, you're amazing. You're amazing, God. Father God, we thank you. You know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, you, you know what I'm talking about. You have no idea. You know what I'm talking about. I can't believe what you're saying. Oh, God loves you. <laughs> How I'm even here? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Oh, Ooh, this is beautiful. <laughs> this is beautiful. How I'm here? It's <laughs> unbelievable. Amen. Amen. I love. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. You see, because He will seek you out. He will seek you out. That is the word we're talking about today. Favor will find you. Oh Lord. Family, let us pray. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in the life of your daughter. 
because you are confirming what she, you have already put in her heart, the very things that she has already desired. And Lord, I love the fact that she even says, how am I even here? Lord, favor will seek out your children. Favor will seek them out, Lord Jesus. And it will bring them to the place that they would receive a word from you. Lord, I just thank you for this moment that as the prophet Samuel spoke into the life of David, that you sought him out and you brought him to the place that a word and an anointing will change his life. Lord, I speak to your daughter as a point of contact. Lord God, that an anointing will come upon her. It would give her the wisdom. It would give her the resources of everything everything that you have assigned to her life lord god i thank you because where she has been overlooked lord god i see her as the head father god you are going to raise this woman you're going to establish her financially in ways that would go beyond her understanding lord god i thank you for your power that will come upon her life and i thank you for your anointing that is even flowing even now lord jesus even now oh god we thank you and we know, Lord God, that you are moving in this same capacity in the lives of all those around, Lord God, that may they see her as a point of contact to what you are doing in the room. Lord Jesus, I thank you that some desires that we have, we think is far-fetched, but Lord, you said you know it, you hear it, you see it, and that you are not man, that you are not able to bring it to pass. Lord, there is nothing impossible for you. And so, Lord, as we stay surrendered to you, as we trust in you as we believe in you Lord God in the field of our faith favor would find us favor would find us and so we would be faithful we would be faithful Father God we love you thank you Jesus for what you're doing in this room thank you Jesus for what you're doing in this room it is almost like there are you know it's not to be cliche because it will sound like it's the Christmas but it's almost like there are gifts all around the house it's almost like I can see gifts on the heads of people and the Lord is endowing you with something fresh and something new and so family wherever you are in life trust God trust God be willing to humble yourself you don't you 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 don't need to, to move beyond the word of God in your life. Be willing to trust his word. And you're going to see great and mighty things done in your life. We love you. Praise God. Praise God. Can we just worship God in this house? Hallelujah. Jesus thank you Jesus I don't know if this person is here watching is there an Emily in the house Emily there's an Emily just wait maybe this person is watching because I just keep sensing that there is an Emily and you feel as though that, that you see one of the things that the devil tries to trick people with and that is a lie because the devil will want to make you feel like you're not seen because God highlighted someone else. That is never the work of the Lord. Rather, God will use that which he highlights to increase your faith and to let you know what he's already doing in the room. And so the Lord is speaking to me about an Emily and you feel as though based on the Lord speaking to someone, you feel like the Lord is ignoring you. And I'm saying your name right now because for you to know that no, the Lord sees you. And he is with you. And he is not far from you. Thank you, Jesus.